Hello, hello, hello. Okay, we're going to try this again. Can you hear me now? I have been having some issues. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell is going on with my computer, but something is messed up. Um, so we're going to see if maybe Flash, when he comes back, if it will work again. In the interim, this is Grammy Mary, and uh, yeah, I'm waiting on Flash Droid. <laughs> see if maybe he's here. Um, I see that he's logged in. Okay, I'm going to try and call him and see if I lose anything. Hopefully, I will not lose my Skype or my Sam's or my other fun stuff. So, we're trying. We're trying. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. absolutely. Better than before. Ah, must have been me loaded. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm mm -hmm. glad I thought of doing that. Well, and my, my uh, sound mixer was not working well either. Well, you're a little mumbled again. Wait, what are you moving away from the mic? No, I'm doing just fine. It's just Okay, there you are. All okay. Right. Yeah, I had to switch well, my we'll see. We'll have a we'll have a dork table extravaganza. <laughs> 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 but I hear you back back to normal now. I think something was uh conflicting on my system fucking up with the Skype. Uh well I think that's what it was. So uh, let's call it that and if it wasn't that, who cares? We fixed it. There you go. Yeah. We're live we'll now. Stop. And we're, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> wow, we do that a lot, don't we? Yes, we do. Anyway, and I was having, I mean, I was getting booted as well from from uh, both of my, oh, Grimmy says it sounds good there, so, yay! And well, I'm hearing. There you go. With a little luck. With a, stuff. Yeah. With a little luck and perseverance, and, and I'm hearing something, but it must just be in my a little mind. Hey, yeah. we're at the dork table. Tell everybody. Hey, hi. yeah, uh, we're at the dork table. I'm. I just keep. I keep hearing something. It's like, what the hell am I hearing? What the hell? The inside of your head rattling. <laughs> what happens to me? Or the ocean's roar, or uh, God knows air. what else. Know. Yeah. Now just have another shot of Bushmills and. Everything will be fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will try that. Okay, over here on Mines, I really don't see anybody playing along over here on Mines. So, hey there, anybody over on Mines, how you doing? Um, over here on the effing site. Wow, I hear, I hear, you know, it's almost like somebody's frying potatoes. Oh, that was better. Wow. Or not. Well, you're, you're coming in and out on my headset. So, this ought to be a fun show. Yes, it should. <laughs> well, you never listen to me anyway. So <laughs> Good Lord, if you were my captive audience, I'd be alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, how funny. <laughs> yeah, you would and, be alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, say just the normal hellos. I don't, just the I don't normal hellos? Well, yeah, I mine isn't set up like the other sites were, so it's you know, hit and miss. But um, yeah, it's fun to play over there, and it was nice to see somebody from there come over to say hey to us. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, okay, over here on this effing site, I see TD Sanders and I see Grimmy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, guys. And Java Doctor was over here as well as Rob Works. Uh -oh. And let's see, fourteen billion is missing from her Haiti relief fund no, at this, her foundation, this. and his brother does their taxes. Ah, so where's your special prosecutor? Well, shit, Larry, you know you guys need to quit picking on her. Damn it. Okay. And uh, it really, honestly, and truly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, the, the weirdest part of this show is I, you're going in and out on my headphones, but when I play the rerun later, uh -huh. then I'll hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're going to do, this is the New Year Dork Table show, Dork Table announcement. <laughs> I can't hear Mary. Mary can't ha hear me. So this is, <laughs> I guess, just the normal show. <laughs> What am I thinking? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, too funny. Okay, let me see if I can adjust some things. I'm going to adjust the volume. 
Okay, you know, yeah, we my talk stereo. Our we sound like shit. Mm. Aiden's back on the RLMA, Aiden. Okay. Aiden Z. I'm probably saying his name wrong. You can't read. Boy, when I learn to read, you people are in trouble. No shit. Hmm. Okay. I lost Mary completely now. Can you hear me? Wow. Can you hear me now? Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, I've got hmm. a really bad Skype signal. <laughs> Um, adjust your microphone settings. Okay. Yeah, okay, there. dear. I'm on the radio trying to be on the radio here. And it's not happening. Okay. I don't know what the hell is going on here. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Can you hear me at all, Flash? My microphone is just... <laughs> I completely lost him. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is just entirely too funny. Oh well, y'all are listening to the dork table and we're just being absolute dork Um I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely close out of Skype. I'm just going to quit Skype and restart it and uh, see if maybe I can get Flasher to join in. <laughs> I love this game. I love this game. I'm having entirely too much fun with this game. Um, and there goes Skype. It just went bye-bye. And, uh, yeah, my computer is not being a happy camper, apparently. Okay. So, that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's check this out. We'll try Skype again. Um, hi, Aidens. And welcome aboard, honey. How are you doing? Um, yeah, long time no see, like over on Mines just a little bit ago. So, I'm going to try and do this, and hopefully, yeah, I'm broadcasting, so hopefully it'll <laughs> work. <laughs> okay, Skype, what's your issue? What is your malfunction, Skype? Here it comes. Okay, I have a missed call from the dork table. Imagine that. Now... I'm going to have a little bit of fun because when I try and contact, it's I'm going to have to do a quick because for some stupid reason, my sound mixer likes to dump me off of Spreaker. So, we're going to try this again. And I'll make sure once Skype connects, uh, not Spreaker, but Sam's. Sa there it went. Ha! Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly. Yay! I quit my it. yeah. I quit my Skype completely. That's what I did. Yeah, you rebooted it all. Yeah. Okay. That's what Five I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! See the stupid cybernetic stuff. We just have so much fun, but eventually we dork our way through it. <laughs> Push a button. Somebody's gonna salute. That's what they do. That's right. That's right. We've had worse starts than this. Yes, we have actually. <laughs> We're at the dork table once again. With yes, my we good are. Al Graham Z and me. Yeah, that was Flasher Rooney too. <laughs> wow, what a start! Okay. Yeah, I know. So, uh, okay. We were rudely interrupted by that mistransmission. So, what did I miss? Anything good? What did you miss? Just me fumble <laughs> fucking. <laughs> mm. Excellent. You've been doing this so long, you can fumble fuck in your sleep. Wait, sorry, Wayne. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm Ooh. sure that's not the case. <laughs> Oops. A slip of the mouth, I suppose you would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably I didn't that. I say tongue because that sounded sexual. Oh, well, you may need anyway. to turn your volume up just a wee bit, hon, because right <laughs> now it's... I'm at 100% on my thing. Okay. And I'm talking into my microphone. Okay, well, my levels are really low, so maybe I well, need to, I need to fix something on my Sam broadcaster well, as well. We go again. <laughs> Jeez. No, I am. Juggling flash. <laughs> I am not gonna push any more buttons, because if uh, I push geez. buttons, I break things. I know, but all of today's work. <laughs> That's hey. right. That's right. You're two steps away from being the next senator of Kansas. Oh, good Lord, please no. Oh, well. Oh, and <laughs> Rascal got up here to help, too. So thank you, Rascal. Uh, okay. We need help. 
Right. Okay, now to say hey to everybody, now that we've finally gotten to where we can say hey. Yay! Horror Monica. Um, <clears throat> over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give us static, if we can stay connected and keep broadcasting and all that other fun hootie ha. We have Barman right up top. Hey, Barman. You old prick. How the fuck are you? I have no idea how the hell he is, but... <laughs> I'm just going to, there, I boosted up my Skype, because, yeah. Boy, we sound really professional here, Mary. I know, we do. <laughs> Have well, we ever done this before? I don't like, think so. Oh, like two 15-year-olds trying to fuck a football. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wow. No, the laces go on top. <laughs> Oh, the laces go in the trash. <laughs> oh, wait. That's a different lace. <laughs> oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Hello, RLM. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Cowboy Tech is listening in. Hey, Cowboy. How are you doing, hon? I hope everything is just awesome for you. <laughs> and looky there. I see Grimner is also here, as well as the lovely Kate from Florida. Hey. And Kate is having issues with cold weather down there. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, Rascal Honey, I love you, but quit messing with the microphone. I'm having oh. enough issues. Okay. Global warming ha has taken a, a little bit of a vacation, Miss Mary. Yes, global warming has. I think it went to Africa, where all the people left. Now the warm is there. Oh, so. So wherever there's lots of people, no warm. Wherever there's a few people, lots of warm. Global warming. See, they stick in all the fucking cold countries, so you got to lay with nine other people just to get a fucking body temperature that's tolerable going. You know what I mean? Is that how that works? Yeah. Okay. Group think gone haywire. Ah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Proceed. Okay, let's see. I said hey to Kate. Asmo is here. Asmo. Hey, Asmo. And uh, let's see. Okay, just a minute. Um, Beth Z is also in the house. Hey, Beth Z. How are you doing, hon? And looky there, Chal Sedoni. My cat is just really being lovey-dovey, and it's like, wow. what the hell? What the All hell? Over your leg, Chal no. Sedoni. Oh, oh, Chal Sedoni, don't do that all over my leg. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I meant the cat. I was saying hi. Uh, Never. Okay, Boy, thank you. Boy, it's not my day. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Live Podcast. Yes. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Uh, right. Okay. Um, I also see Chloe, Chloe. We got a double dip and a Chloe going on in the house. And Gramsie, that's me. I forgot. See, that's what's wrong. I didn't change my name to Gramsie Dork. Oh, that explains it. Oh, man. Yeah, that does explain a lot, doesn't it? Mm. Wow. Ow. And the cycle continues. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, maybe I should do that real quick. I don't know. Oh, oh see, Grimmy was here in the ocean sound, too. So, yeah, it's gone, so the tide must have went out. Uh, 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 <laughs> losing chart. <laughs> I have no idea. See what happens when you criminalize weed? This is the <laughs> result of criminalizing weed. You can't have a proper functioning society if you have criminalized weed that is true that Get is it? true <laughs> that's true okay i be don c is in the house hi don i also see java 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 doctor and java doctor too we got a double dipping going on because yeah which hey that goes along with me because i have a full cup of coffee and a carafe with coffee in it because i'm gonna be thirsty chloe 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 yoohoo and Graham Z. Dork. Hello, Graham Z. Oh, Guberzilla says it's not global warming. It's other factors like earth tilt and solar activity causing superstorms. I right. think That's I think from it's... a guy that wants to build a spaceship to leave the earth. Come on, See, people. Well, that's a uh, hey, he's entitled to his opinion. I personally think that somebody's just messing with shit. You know, and part of it is also because, you know, climate and it changes. It does that. Oh, this is a dork announcement. I got some bush mills from my mother-in-law. It's not bad. 
one. Oh, hey. <laughs> That's tasty. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see JJ's in the house. Hey, JJ's, how are you doing, hon? And looky there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's a cough. It's a hack. It's a wheeze. It's a, yeah, all the sky spraying it's they've been doing. It's a freaking disease. It <laughs> is. Ah. <laughs> oh, hey, you're a poet, and you didn't know it. Okay. Juana Taco is here. And Meister Brower. Woody. Hey. Woody. The Bitcoin man. Yeah. And P. Bunyan is in the house. As, yeah, and rain. We have rain. Well, the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. RLM Fluke is also in the house. Please uh, do not. Oh, God, you. there he goes doing that voice. Ugh. You freaking creeper. <laughs> Thank you for Rob Works. <laughs> Hi, Beetle. <laughs> hey, number one, Beetle. What you doing, Beetle? I also see Dakota and Dima. Oh. Dima, Dima, Dima. And uh, let's see, Flash Nasty is in the house. I wonder who that is. Oh, yeah, when that's you. you. <laughs> is that me? Oh, I th Lord. Yes, that's you. Gooberzilla oh. is also here. Oh. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Hey, and Kozu. Oh, and Flash Nasty has just quit. No, I I was playing with my computer and you pushed a, a button. Move. Yeah, well, I clicked the thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> you click, pushed click. a button. You pushed I'm just a button. Like, yeah, I'm like you in a guy suit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's scary. Um, I yeah, also see no, Kozu no, is in the house, no, no. as Go well as Moy 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 Moy. And oh, yeah. Ninson Dubois is here. <laughs> Poxified and pom 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 sauce. Hey. And looky there, Sock Puppet. Hey, Sock Puppet. We sock also... is here? Yeah. Hey, well, he's Sock is logged in. Um, he's been busy, yeah. Yeah, he busy has been. in Florida. Yes. Fixing Florida. He's been fixing Florida. See, that's his he job. Added a, yeah, he added a U to the state name and now it's florida <laughs> florida <laughs> wow, you are so racist <laughs> i also see slim jim flim is in the house as well as teddy the cuddly Teddy's. one and one. phantom two to round out the crew and that is pretty oh, much it and yeah the phantom is going to get us. It's the phantom. <laughs> but you never saw it. Did you ever see that movie um, with Paul Williams? And it's called uh, The uh, Phantom of the Paradise. No, I From never saw Disney. that. It's I a takeoff of The Phantom of the Opera. Ah. Uh. And the colors, this music's a little weak. It was probably done in like three or four weeks, but the movie's hysterical. Ah. Yep. And the, the 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 good guy, bad guy is Winslow Leach, the composer. <laughs> Winslow Leach. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and he is taken over by Swan. <laughs> ah. Who, who owns the paradise. You got to it's really a good story. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the one time she listens and she says, I'll oh, thank you. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Wayne, straighten this out now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought you both would appreciate that one. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'll make him listen secrets. to that later. We have our secrets in Dorkland. Yes, That's we just do. That's the way it rolls. Secrets. Secrets. So, we Which have I secrets, would... my precious. <laughs> oh, what? I was, was kind of out there. Did you say hi to everybody? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you were. See, like you listened to me. Uh huh. I li I listened to your show that you do without me. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I listen to your show, the one you do without me? Why? Because when you do the show and you talk about me, I I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> My ego was just inflated beyond 
anything I c could possibly have imagined. Ah, we stoked your ego, eh? Well, no, not we. You, you uh, actually hey. gave me credit for an idea that I planted in your little brain. I know, but it's me, myself, and I. All Isn't three of us. Strange? Yeah, but we always go back to, you know, you see it your way and I see it mine, but it's the same thing. But the definition is a little different. Yeah. But the end result, could you just imagine that? A bunch of fucking senators sitting around. We got to tell the truth or we can't get a ding dong? Okay, <laughs> I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you know, you'd find out what these guys are real. Well, okay, I'll tell you. You'd find out what they're really worth when they're sitting there sweating because they want a Cheeto. Yeah. You say, yeah. look at the pretty Cheeto. Oh, it's so crunchy and cheesy. It's not real cheese, but it's crunchy and cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> but these are the same people that poison us with this shit. And I think it's fucking high time that they enjoyed a little bit of their um, distribution. Let's put it like that. You yeah. Because I want to talk about dealing drugs. I read it on the internet all the time about those illegal drug dealers and all that shit that goes on around the world and all that well if anybody thought about it, it wouldn't be possible in this time of history if the government and the military weren't behind it true because you know? they in, in know world, everything yeah in a world where you can't cross the street without somebody taking your picture they're moving tons of drugs around unnoticed yeah and i want to know how <laughs> well, you know, it's no different than they couldn't find Osama bin Laden because, well, you know, how difficult is it to find a six foot five Arab guy that's on dialysis? Mm, seriously. Well, apparently it's a lot harder than you think because nobody ever did it. Well, yeah. It sounds it sounds like the old Jack and the Beanstalk, Santa Claus, you know, rabbit thing to me. Another fairy tale created by the power so that we'll be chasing our tails like a bunch of idiots, yep. which we all end up doing somehow. I don't know how that works. Why Why are they beating us? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, my I'm God. So I just came over here to Facebook, and Tom W. that pops into the chat every once in a while, he's using one of my cheers. <laughs> he said, today I will identify as a cheerleader. Ra ra re, kick him in the knee. Ra ra ras, kick him in the... Other knee. Uh, other knee. <laughs> hey, Tom W. So what is your personal stand at this point in time on the uh, marijuana situation there, Miss Mary? I heard you say decriminalize, yeah. not legalize. Well, legalizing well, just still keeps it underneath the structure of the law or right. the man and That's it can be taxed and it can be all this and regulated but if yeah. you just freaking decriminalize it put it back to what it actually is you know just look at it and go it's a weed look some of them are pretty some of them it, you can roll and smoke well <laughs> yeah you're making it simple and goofy but the truth is it is the most important thing living thing on the planet to help sustain a physical comfort level. And it's been demonized and lied to about and just bullshitted about for 80 years. And certain indoctrinations take hold and will not let go. I was reading the chat on the RLM before the show. Uh huh. And we had our, you know, the two most prolific members of the crowd debating banning alcohol. Ban I mean, banning is your fucking answer. You don't have a problem. If you're not using the shit, why do you even have a voice in the goddamn argument? You know, it's like me talking about an abortion. I ain't going to have an abortion. What the fuck business do I have talking about abortion, giving advice about abortions? I'm never going to have one. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to smoking dope or drinking a shot, I'm I'm in, I'm involved in that shit. I know what to say. Ah. Well, and uh, well, I'm a firm believer. If you have a fucking opinion about something, it would help if you had some experience to go along with that opinion. Not I read it on the internet. <laughs> that but, is a weak argument now. But but it was on the internet, so it must be true. Well, I know that. Mm. What are we gonna Jeez. do? Well, yeah. you know, and I, 
I don't mm. have a... See, now, I have a problem with abortion simply because it's not just you that you're making a decision for. You're mm. making a decision. I, I saw a meme years ago where a little teenage gal is standing there profile, and she's looking down at her tummy, and she's thinking... My mom is going to kill me. And they have a little oh. thought bubble coming out of her tummy saying, my mom is going to kill me. Yeah. Holy um, shit. Is that not freaking powerful or what? But, well, you know, to me it was. your upbringing, Mary. Yeah, well, to me that was a very powerful, wow, do you really need to say anything else? So mm -hmm. that one, that one I can. But if you're not going to partake of something, you know, like. I don't like um, Brussels sprouts, but that doesn't mm. mean that I'm going to tell everybody in the world, you cannot eat Brussels sprouts because I don't like them. I don't like asparagus. That doesn't mean I'm going to mm. tell everybody else in the world, you cannot have asparagus because doesn't I don't like stop it. stop you from jabbing us in the eye that those of us that do eat that shit. Well, you know, you can eat that shit. I tell you what, yeah. if you really want to eat the asparagus, I'll let you have my share. See, How's that's that how I feel about bacon. So, right. Because, yeah. You know, personal taste. I mm -hmm. don't like the flavor of bacon. I don't like sitting there chewing on something for 20 minutes to swallow it. It's like, hey, it's too much work. I want something easy. Get me some oatmeal. <laughs> oh, so you don't eat celery then, huh? Fuck no. Get that shit all. No, man, that's like work. If I want a job, I'll go back to America and go to Congress. I don't <laughs> want to work. I'm tired of it. You guys can work. Work is a four-letter fucking word for a reason, and it's not because golf was taken. <laughs> Although I still don't see the attraction of golf either. You know, even when Robin Williams explains it, it sounds hilarious mm. as hell, but I wouldn't go play. Why do you hit a little bitty ball with a stupid stick and then go after it and do it again? Why do you do that? Because those are the guys that if they went after a woman would fail time after time after time and just spend money and never get anywhere. But at least they get the ball in the hole once in a while. Yeah, but if you look at the way they dress, it's pretty obvious that, yeah, women folk no, are not no, necessarily no. attracted the way, to no. the golf look ensemble. The no, no. There's guys out there wearing fucking skirts. It ain't got nothing to do with the way you dress. <laughs> It's got everything to do with what you want to spend your money. Let's take a, a, a fellow um, RLM patron that frequents a certain coffee house that is very popular in America and say, you know, hey, I don't want to buy that horror donut. She's hustling me for a donut. Put that, that money-hungry bitch. <laughs> See, when you're on a golf course, you can afford the donut. Oh. Yep. See, and I can afford a donut because I don't go do the golf course thing. Hey, I have no idea where we went with this damn conversation. <laughs> I have no I idea would, how we got there, but out, it's okay. I to make a point about I don't go around giving women advice on abortions because I don't have experience. Yes. So I am personally insulted by people that without any physical contact, write a bunch of shit on a screen and think they're telling me something, you know? Well, I can write a bunch of shit on the screen. I can type shit uh, till the cows come yes, home. Yes, exactly. And if you don't agree with them, there's something fucking wrong with you for not agreeing with them. Wow. Really? What happened? Whatever happened to, you know, the way I grew up was. What? There's your side, there's her side, and there's what really happened. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's the way it went. You know, nobody saw it. Then bullshit. You're, you know, you're as. It's possible you're telling the truth. It's not likely. But if nobody physically sees shit, I think it's time for us as people to step the fuck out and quit judging shit we don't know anything about. Yeah. You know. Well, I brought this up before is down at the train there's a guy that works at the kiosk and he's from iran and we see each other he knows i'm a jew i know he's an arab and we get along just fine i don't yeah. understand all this oh jew jew arab fucking christian Christ. it's a bunch of nonsense 
And until people wake up and realize that it's just to divide us so we'll do the things we do to each other, then they'll never stop. Well, that's that whole lumping together bullshit Mm -hmm. that's going on. You know, instead of taking people at face value, dealing with them one on one, you go, oh, (laughs) excuse me, you're a part of that group. How do I know? Because you have a big nose or because you have this or because you have that. You know, physical traits, unless you have lots of money and a good plastic surgeon, are what you're born with. You know, so why why judge people because of their physical traits? That's what. Mm. Oh, you know, speaking of judging physical uh, traits, the other day I, I seen, um, who was it? Somebody on the RLM put up a post about a girl apologizing for feminism. And I think, was it Paul Bunyan? It might have been Paul Bunyan the other day, yesterday or the day before. I stole it and put it on mines, and I'd be amazed that it got some act. Uh, some activity it was a woman 15 minutes talking about how misled she's been about money and how men are treated and in the female perspective and I thought it was wow it was kind of like an apology she was a bit dramatic you know like us on the dark table oh yeah we go into our little rants with our little voices and such but, you know, it, behind all the joking around or the drama, there's still a good point to be made. And, and, and it was interesting. I think it was Paul Bunyan that posted. I wanted to tell him thanks, but I never I didn't remember when I saw him. Ah, well, <clears throat> and I haven't seen that video yet. I probably ought to go mm. look for it. And and uh... it's about 15 minutes long. It's on my main feed on uh, on the minds dot com. I can oh. post it here on the RLM, but it's like 17 minutes long and she talks. So ah. it's not a reading thing. But the, the point of it is, is that people's perspectives are being exposed. We're, we're, we're so we're sheltered from so many other perspectives that we only see the ones we like or the ones we're familiar with. So and now with the Internet coming around, we're starting to get a little bit of, hey, look at this crazy bitch over here doesn't believe in feminism. Let's find out why. Well, I don't believe in feminism. I th- it's just an ism, and I have an issue with that. There must be something wrong with you, then, Miss Mary. Oh, Are you yeah. Broken? <clears throat> yes, I am. Yes, mm. I am. But I kind of like it this way. I enjoy being broken. If well, if the, I am girl, if I'm considered girl, broken by a broken <laughs> society, that means I'm fixed, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> the girl speaking reminded me of how Cirque speaks in. Uh, in terms of society, you know, Cirque really lives the shit she talks. She's not just on here on the RLM typing a bunch of crap. She really gets out there in the world. When she goes to work and there's somebody homeless, she gives them a cup of coffee, you know, something. She she puts her hand out to strangers. She's a nice person. Now me, fuck them, let them starve. I don't. I'm American. I just can't let go of that oh, every man for you, himself thing. You are not like that because I know you have. <laughs> hey, hey, you have told me several times oh, that you okay. share ciggies and that kind of shit uh, with people. So, uh, But my mentality, I mean, I can still, I have the ability to walk away from somebody. I just don't abuse it anymore. You know, it's there. If I want to be a cold hearted prick, I can be. I just don't, I don't participate in that life. Now when somebody needs something and I'm I'm there, I hand it to them if I got it. And if I don't have it, I just tell them I don't have it. Sorry. And they go, oh, okay. They don't care any more than I do. They just like to be recognized as people. Yeah. Because what I meant was I'll be coming out in and out of the grocery store and they have the guy selling his magazines or whatnot to, to make a few dollars, which uh-huh. is legal here. And I never have cash because I use a card. And but I always have cigarettes, and if they smoke, I give them cigarettes, and they go thank you, and I go cool, best I could do. Yeah. And there's no judgment amongst the poor. You know, we're poor people out here, uh, working class, that kind of thing. It, we're there's no millionaires living in this town, so people tend to be a little bit more uh, friendly to the guy that's down when there is one. Well, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times people empathize. It's it's a lack of empathy that's going on. That. Yeah, I think the Danes have a uh, a good good heartedness to them about foreigners in their land that don't have. They're pretty generous about it. But 
I come from America where every third person had their hand out on certain times of day, you know, streets or what have you. And it gets old. You can't help everybody. So what happened to me was I couldn't help anyone instead of if you can't help them all, don't help no one. So I fell in that wagon. I went, wow. Oh. But then getting away from the city and all that for so long, now I've got to look back on myself and see how I behaved and then understand why I behaved that way. Self fucking uh, to sustain my own life the other guy had to go hmm. my needs were and wants were way more important than his because i got five other people bitching at me about what they want see yeah and, and the way i live now there's none of that it's just me and circle and the dog and the cat and everybody's comfortable plenty of room plenty of uh whatever we need is there you just got to get off your butt and go do it. Yeah. But where I came from, wow, the laziness was, it wasn't as so apparent to me till I got away from it for a period of time. Well, you know, sometimes that's what you need to do, though. You need to step away, step back, and once you reach a certain distance, whether it's physical <laughs> or, or mm. chronological or whatever, get a little bit of distance and then you look back and you go wow because i know there have been times where i thought i made a massive stupid ass choice and then three four or five years down the road i look back and i go wow yeah. that really did prepare me for this What's one happening now? <laughs> yeah. oh speaking of that uh monday i i i uh i found out my mom passed away mm-hmm she has now. I, I've been I've been expecting this for many many years. She's been very ill most of her last twenty, but she kept recovering from whatever the system did, and then this time she didn't. So now, and I thought Alan would be here tonight, but I guess he's still dealing with the uh, all that uh, family things and such in in England with the with the passing and all that. Yeah, I wanted to mention it to him because he'll probably listen to the table and go, wait, you didn't even mention mom, you prick, blah, blah, blah. So I mentioned in mom because I didn't want my little brother to be mad at me. <laughs> well, and you know what? I saw something the other day that um, posed a question. What mm. if when we die, we really wake up? And oh, so, that would be nice. Yeah. You know, so it's... I'm especially when I hear somebody has not been well for a while because a, a good friend of mine just um, mm. Tuesday evening mm. passed uh. and um, mm. and her hubby bless his heart he used to be my my ex's boss and really really nice people but she had been struggling for years and it's like you know, there's a lot of people that think I'm strange, but I just look at that as, wow, that is such a blessing that they're no longer struggling. Yeah, moving on to the next phase, whatever. The, well, everybody knows what happens after you die, Mary. Read it on the Internet. They'll tell you. I know. Um, <laughs> well, you know, part of me is pleased because the woman was in, you know, bad health and agony most of the time. And I'm glad it's over. But the other part of me is like, that ah, that was my mom. And, you know, I could talk to my mom about anything. So yeah. I, I, I'll miss that. That much, I got to say. Well, but, but you can still the, talk to her. It's just that she responds to you differently now. Weird how that works. Yeah, you, you only find that out when somebody close to you goes and you deal with it yourself. Yeah. You know, you come to your own. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we're all the same. We're just different uh, looking sometimes. Yeah. But basically. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but basically the core of us, uh, some people are a little like me, a little mean, and some people are like you, a little nice, and then some people aren't, and that's life, and you just roll on with it. Yeah. But, you know, for, uh, but it was funny, because the morning that, that I found out about it, uh, I went on the RLM, and a couple of guys were ragging me about running away from America and all that harsh shit, but what they don't know, I'm going to talk about it now, because it's over, is... My father, uh, my mother and father, I had made an arrangement to go on a, vi a vacation to go visit them. And eight days before I get there to see them, my father died. Mm -hmm. So here I am in Scotland, and I've got my mother with no idea what to do with herself after my father passed away. So I stayed there for a couple years and took care of it all. 
Yeah. And now Alan's replaced me in England and, you know, he took her down to England from Scotland. And, you know, the, and this is the end result of, of what me and my brother tried to accomplish. And hopefully she went out uh, in, you know, in the country of her choice where she wanted to go and everything's good. Yeah. Well, but, and she had her boys mm, tending to her. Mm, so, yeah, hey. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So everything, you know, but sometimes when people bring up, oh, you ran away from America without knowing all the details that went into the decisions that I made to do what I've done, you're talking at your ass. You don't know anything. But. It's your opinion, and if that's the kind of shit you want to talk about, you feel free. It's a free world. I'm not a pussy. I can take it, but I don't like it at all. You know? See, and that's where that's where I really think when people look at another, observe another, basically mm. what they're seeing is their own perspective of that person. They aren't seeing that person. They aren't seeing what that person has gone through. Mm. So, you know... Everybody looks at everybody else and sees their own personal mm. perspective of that individual mm. or whatever their action was. Touchy subject, huh, Mary? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, we all want to be right. That I'm so stuck on that. I want to be right, just like the next guy, but sometimes I'm not. You know, And when I'm not right, I have to learn where the mistake I made was and then correct it somehow. Yeah. And there's some some mistakes you can make in life you can fix and there's others that you make and they're finished. They're done. That's the end of that. Yeah. Well, that's a personal thing. And if you don't know what makes another man do what he does, it's a shame to judge him based on your opinion of something you don't have any information about. It's like believing the vote matters. You know, it sounds good and it looks good and it makes sense, but it's not true. And it's your a feel good matter. thing. Because yeah, I went and I participated. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I went and participated. I voiced my opinion. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And, you know, another thing that really, and I'm, yeah, I use Facebook because I pretty much stay in touch with my family with it. And then I have a few friends that that's the only way I have contact with them. But I'm seeing more and more people over here on Facebook that are pissing and moaning and bitching and groaning about what's his, what's his fuck, the, the, the guy that has Facebook or owns it or whatever. Basic, Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg. In any case, um, they're all bitching about how he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. And in the back of my mind, remembering what things were like running world truth. And knowing that, really, y'all are going to sit here and piss and moan and bitch because I gave you a playground. And the playground isn't good enough. And yet, you throw trash. And you do all this other fun stuff. You don't clean up. You don't fix the paint that got chipped off because someone bashed someone's head. You don't do any of this other stuff. But, by God, you're ready to bitch about it. And that's <laughs> what I see about all of this stuff anymore. It's like people are so ready to bitch bitch about things and mm -hmm. not willing to step up and go okay well i don't like this situation so i'm going to do something to fix it not just mouth off mm -hmm. you know but actually get up and physically do something to make at least their part better mm -hmm. bitching is so well, much easier apparently you know my cousins in california when i first um went to stay in, in Scotland went and take care of mom and all that. They were all for it. But the longer I stayed and the less interest I showed in returning to the States, the less interest they had in me. Yeah. So, and it even came to the point with one of my favorite cousins there. She'd say, well, you don't live here anymore. Your opinion isn't, we don't need your opinion. I went, Wow, I spent 50 years in that country or about, give or take, 49, something like that. And out of that time, I didn't, you know, I didn't qualify as a member of society enough to carry an opinion. And it taught me the lesson that everybody in the world thinks that shit. They might not realize they sh think that shit. You've got to stop it on your own. And you can't, you can't do it without some kind of help. It's yeah. like a... It's it's like we need a 12-step program for authority. 
because these fucking people are so caught up in, if you don't tell me what to do, I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, everybody keeps saying, well, well, what do you think we should do about it? I don't know uh, what we should do about it, but I know what I'm doing about it. Yeah, I live my three-step program, by the way. I don't lie. I don't kill. I, and I, Well, I don't grow, but I, I participate in the, the hemp program, and I support it completely, except for the legalizing. I think legalizing weed is just a, a – a, it's a way for Monsanto to get their hooks on this shit and fuck it up in 40 more years. Yeah. So there won't be any more weed. Yeah, not not on natural weed. I've, no, I smoked some of that GMO shit and when I was in uh, Freetown. No, it was horrible. I could tell that something was wrong with the weed. I went, yeah, I told Cirque, I went, uh, wow, this stuff is making me angry. I said, I, I don't get this. I don't like it. I ain't smoking this crap. So, so much for your addiction story, you know? <laughs> yeah. People go, well, you're addicted to pot. And I went, well, if I'm so fucking addicted, why am I turning my nose up to this shit? You know? Yeah. I, as a human being, I could tell this doesn't, this ain't what I'm used to. My body was just no, 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 no. And my mind and my body synced up. And at the same time, we both said no. And I have not gone back and bought any of it since. Now, are you, no the one, are you the one that sent me that Joe Rogan meme? I don't know, Joe Rogan. I don't know if I can open up the Skype and see what I sent you. I'm okay. going to try it. It says, the only every... way marijuana can kill you is if someone takes 25 pounds of it and throws it out of a CIA drug plane and it hits you <laughs> in the fucking head. That's no, how you die that. from marijuana. You'd have to smoke in one session a ton of weed to overdose on it, and you can't. So there's no way. It's insane. Now, a lot of this stuff that they're, you know, they're, they're distilling down or whatever to make the oils, that shit's starting to get pretty damn potent. But even that, I mean, everybody's going, but for the children. Okay, well, you know what? If you want to be a responsible adult, you know, because adulting is hard, if you wish to partake in some of these things, be fucking responsible with your stuff that you have for recreational purposes or medicinal purposes and put it up. And I understand. I had little ones. Yes, they are monkeys. They can climb to anything. Yes, the only yeah. people that can open childproof medicine bottles are children. I get that. But come on, be freaking responsible for your choices here, people. But that's just entirely too hard. What? You mean I have to be <laughs> responsible? Uh? Okay, it's like we were discussing the round globe before the show, between uh -huh. us, uh -huh. you know, separate from the show. Uh -huh. And if you stray from the crowd in one of the major you know, areas of uh, conformity, you're an outcast. That's just the end of it. Yeah. There ain't no other way because to belong to the herd, you must comply. And if you don't comply, there you go. You're out. Yeah, you're no longer part of the herd. My question is what happens if the herd thins out enough to where there is no herd? Then what? Then it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, I was making a joke because yeah. there always will be a herd. 5%. Of your people do 95% of your work. Period. It's a fact. It's not an idea. It's not something you can look up. It's something you need to look around at with your own two eyes and pay attention to and see it for your very self. So you can understand what exactly it means. Because uh. it may mean something different to the individual, but overall you can look at it and go, wow, it's true. If you want to. Hey, I think I, you know what? what? You're talking what? about that, and <clears throat> I just clicked on Twitter because you know me. I'm always <laughs> <laughs> ignoring me at any cost. No, baby. I'm I I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> I'm just saying this is like a massive synchronicity because we're talking about this, and yeah. then right there on my Twitter feed as I click on it is the dollar mm -hmm. vigilante. Those who hate to hear the truth and love to live off lies can't handle reality. Well, well, how do you define what the fuck reality is anyway? It's all subjective. 
my reality is not yours and yours is not mine. But we have this shared reality that, I don't know, it kind of grabs a hold of me and takes me where I don't want to go. You know, like the I ran away from America story, depending on the stand that you hold as a citizen and all that crap that I don't believe in in the first place. Yeah, I escaped that fucking shithole. But on the other hand, well, what I was really doing was just going on a vacation and things went really bad. Yeah. And I just made the best of a shitty situation and I met a Dane. Fuck, me and Cirque were never supposed to meet. I don't even know how that fucking happened. Yeah, that was weird. I mean, you got to remember the beginning. We were disagreeing about everything. It was like, well, these two are sworn enemies. <laughs> now we're married <laughs> four <Yeah>. years, and, <laughs> four years and a couple of months. And it's like whatever I always thought life was turned out to be something different. I've never been able in my life to understand what was coming at me and deal with it until I was through it and on the other side. So I just lived that way. I never had an expectation. You know, life brings me what it brings me, what happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. When you define it, like when me and Moose were going through our thing about, well, you know, you you got a lot to say you live over there and da da da. Well, yeah, but I spent 50 years in America and I do understand how, how the system is run. I, I know the people there, you know, and most of them don't want anything to do with me anymore because <laughs> I'm crazy and I will not be a good citizen. There's the crux of my problem. Shame on you. You just won't be a good little citizen. Same thing on the RLM. I refuse to, to support America as a, a backup. I don't want to be American. I don't want to be thought of as American, but it's kind of obvious I am one here, but they tolerate it. Yeah. I've never been yelled at or attacked for, you warmonger prick, what are you doing, blah, 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 blah. But if you look at links on the American stuff, people like me are always in conflict with other people, fighting and sparring, and my side's right and your side's wrong. And what I've tried to tell you over the time is I don't want a side. I don't have a side. I don't give a shit about your fucking side. Leave me out of it. And somehow or another, I've been left out of it. Then I get on this radio thing with you and 20 or 30 people hear, hear us bullshit every week or whatever. <laughs> and my opinion is mind shattering. No, it ain't. I went on to Mines, talked to a guy just like I talked to Mary, and boom, he was on the RLM chatting it up with everybody in the room, just like a normal person. Want yeah. to explain that? Mm? Yeah, mm? well, you know, it just, sometimes if you're just cordial with people, they will be cordial right back to you. Right, I tell you, I mirror what you give me, I give you back in my little way, whatever that is. Now... That's not to say that my perception isn't as fucked up as the next guy. All I'm saying is it's my perception. And the only one that's going to ever judge my perception is me. And I cannot be coaxed to see your side if you're yelling and screaming and forcing me to see your way. That ain't never going to work. That's how I got where I'm at. Hmm. Well, Oh, I can't count the times my father backslapped me for not listening. Oh, Lord. Come on. God, it's like when I was 14, he gave up. It's just too much work to beat on you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> You're a monster. You're never going to. He gave up. Yeah. Do what you want is pretty much the rule. You know, I don't know how to explain it. No, I understand I have, completely. I have, it's yeah. like, hey, you know so much. OK, you do what you want, but you got to deal with the re repercussions of whatever you just did. Don't expect did. me to come bail your ass out. And at the end of my dad's life. He pretty much admitted that I was right in what I had taken a stand on doing in his own, you know, in his own way. He didn't yeah. come out and say, well, oh, you're correct. But the conversation led me to believe that I got some kind of approval out of the old prick before he died. But he wasn't pleased with it, but he accepted it. And it was kind of good enough for me. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you know, that just basically has to be the way it is. Sometimes what people can give you just has to be good enough 
because that's all they can give you. And what what is it really that other people give you besides ideas to build your own ideas on? That really is it. I mean, think about it. all this history and crap we get thrown in our face constantly. And then when you when you read about it 10 years later, you find out that the original thing was a bunch of bullshit. So everything that came after it was a bunch of bullshit. Well, I started out in that. It's all bullshit stance. So I've never had my feelings hurt about finding out the truth. Never surprised me. I'm like, oh, okay. You know. Ah, i give you a horrible example. I had a relationship once. And the girlfriend looks up at across at the table at me while we were having dinner one night, and she said, "Oh, I'm having an affair at work." I said, "Oh, well, that's wonderful. Can you pass the potatoes?" Do what? What? Uh, yeah, I'm she having... said, "I'm having an affair at work," and I looked at her and I said, "Oh, that's wonderful. Can you pass the potatoes?" Ah. Oh. Because well, if it's already happening, what am I going to do about it? Yeah? Well, that's true. That's true. You know, and in, and in, at that point, a, you uh, need something in your tummy. Yeah, and the relationship was over. That was the end of that. Nice knowing you. Get on with life. But wow. other people seem to be, you know, if they're in a life situation, what they don't have is the ability to say enough and leave. I don't have money. I don't have. I walked down on a girl in a snowstorm in North Carolina and hitchhiked to Florida. You know, show me your bad side and I'll fucking walk. There you go. Wow. Wow. Well, see, I now don't that's, know. that's, there's a lot of people that just plain can't do that. You know, yeah, and exactly. so, they, they, yeah, so, they're held yeah. hostage under threat by somebody else and don't realize all you got to do is leave. But I don't have a job. I don't have money. I don't have a car. Well, look, the birds in the sky don't either, but they're still surviving. So why don't you have a little faith and walk away and see where life takes you? It will take you somewhere. Why do you have to be told where you can go? Why do you have to be controlled to that fucking level of control that you have no faith in life taking care of you? It's insane. Well, I just... I keep thinking back, you know, a lot of times people will slur. What I heard that in a video the other day. Mm -hmm. It's a slur, not a not an argument. And um, a lot of people would much rather sling slurs than to try and come up with some kind of argument that can or some kind of point that can be discussed, you know. And, and so maybe just too. maybe. Yeah. No, I do it too, though. Yeah, well, I think everybody does at one that, point. No, no, I just think that, that when, when two people collide, there are certain personalities that just do not clash, that do nothing but clash. Yes. They cannot, they can't coexist in peace. It's the nature of the game that we play, but we're not completely in, in understanding of this, that we're, we're, we are not like what we seem we're like, human beings. We're different than what is portrayed in the media and the internet and all that horse shit. Yeah. You know, if you give a guy a hand, he will not be, you know, uh, leeching off you for the rest of his life. And if he is, he was like that already. You know? And I yes. don't think that, I don't think that's a, but a small fraction of the percentage. Most people enjoy physical uh, contribution. They like to accomplish shit. You know, they like to it, like even hands. Beetle came on the thing. His hands were fucked up from being out in the cold beyond his, his abilities. And hands kind of fucked with him in the beginning. But then he gave him some information about, well, hypothermia this. And if you, that happens, that and whatnot. So even out of the craziest, uh, craziest of us comes a little bit of help if you let him. Yeah. You know, but I don't know all the prejudices we carry towards each other. You're a non pot smoker and you're against this and I'm against it. it's all bullshit. So we'll behave like a bunch of assholes. Yeah. 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 When, when I'm in asshole mode, I, you think I don't know it? 
I got my wife going over. Hey, why are you got to fight with people? I go, hey, shut up. I'm having fun. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, yeah. But there, there is a little part of me, that antagonist, that I recognize. I know that because in person it's a whole other story. If somebody's in peril in, in re- reality, in physical life, I don't spit on them. I don't walk on by and go, I hope you fucking catch on fire too, you cunt. No, I try to help the next guy. That's what I really do. But then again, you know, in a sense, it's bragging. Pancake says, well, you brag, blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe I do. I don't know. I just know that I want other people to treat me the way I treat them. And they do. They go. They really, they really do. Every one of them. But some people are limited by their prejudices beyond me. I have mine, but I can put mine aside for a better problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because you, yeah, can, I mean, you can have your little diss fest and, and have mm-hmm. a good time with that. But then mm-hmm. eventually it comes down to, okay, there seriously is a problem here that needs to be tended to. Let's, let's get this shit figured out, then we can get back to our diss fest. Yeah, because if I'm out there in the street and a car hits me and the paramedic that comes is black and I've got a little bit of consciousness, the last thing out of my mouth is going to be, get your fucking black hands off me, you African nigger bitch. I'm going to say, save me, fucking save me. (laughs) Probably. Yeah. Well, why does it take the ultimate experience for a man to find out he's just another man instead of, oh, I'm better than you? I have a better this, and I have a better that. And the bet. It's all yeah. a bunch of crap. Yeah. We're all the fucking same. Yeah. Well, it's a hard reality to fucking handle. I mean, we're all the same. But that man lives in a cave, and that man lives in a dirt hut. So? <laughs> that man prays to a goat. So? Who cares? Why is that important to you, what that man does? And then that's always somebody else telling you what that man does. And then if you take the five minutes to go talk to the man that they're telling you about, you find out he's just like you. He just speaks with a funny accent or a broken English that you can almost follow. You know, and we're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We are pretty much. I mean, it's just very difficult to hold that thought on top of all other thought is we're equal because I want to be better than you and I want to be better than hands and I want to be better than Kate and Cowboy and Graham and Beth Z but the reality of it is I'm not see and that's where whenever whenever I have to deal with someone that's I'm better I'm better I'm better it's like okay (laughs) so are you better at this (laughs) Or are you better at that? Or And, you know, the only reason I even came up with that line of thinking is years mm-hmm. and years ago, I was talking to a friend and I said, oh, I got to get, I got to go and get a haircut. And they said, which one? <laughs> yeah. And it's, I, I mean, it stopped me, just dead in my tracks. And I was like, wow, okay. The simplest things, huh? Uh-huh. And so yeah. then I started looking at everything else like that as well. And it mm. it really, it it makes things a lot more fun, a lot more interesting, at least for me. But yeah, I, you know, and I'll be the first one to admit, I don't think that the smoking pot in, enhances my thinking or it doesn't make me a superhuman. It just calms me down enough to tolerate the crap in life that just baffles me and makes me want to throw up like fluoride fluoride in the water gmos in the food second rate electricity to the people that need electricity yeah you know this globalization crap these people can't they can't grow a garden in their own backyard but they're going to be part of a global network are you fucking stupid you're being had there's no global anything. It's all in your fucking mind, and they're working you like a nigger. There you go. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. I can't really say that I was ever involved in that, but I lived amongst the Republicans for a long time, and on another in another life period, I lived amongst the Democrats. 
and I can't see a difference. Oh, yeah. I, I'm... <coughs> You know, it took me years, well, actually, it was after my dad died that I found out that um, they, mom and dad were both registered as Democrats. And I said, what the hell? And she said, well, I registered as one because he said that I had to register as one. And back then, she did what he told her to do. <laughs> and, and it's like, really? Wow. But they were so freaking opposite. I had a friend in North Carolina that was a Republican but voted – but re, uh, registered Democrat to vote Republican against the Democrats. That was his logic. Ah. I, 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 I told him, but he didn't believe me. He thought I was crazy. But we, uh, you know, we smoked together, so it led to many conversations that didn't go anywhere. But – it showed me what I needed to see at the time. We're all the fucking same, but we're not. You know, it looks different, but it's just the appearance. It's not the reality of it. It's just the way it looks. There you go. Yeah. I mean, how else would I ever ever got connected to a woman like Cirque and getting married to her? Are you kidding? And I'm not talking about your legal shit. I mean, me and her. We did our own thing. Yeah. The system thing was for the family and the state and all that rubbish to keep them off our ass. But the, the truth of it, we've been hooked ever since we met. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. I don't get it. Well, the legal schmeagel stuff and all of the... Yeah. It was fun to do the wedding. I mean, good Lord, how many guys can say that... I mean. To live the life I've lived and then get married to a Dane and her nephew drops the phone and all that shit that we went through was so fun. Yeah, well, and it was cool to be able to be with you guys on Skype. That was fun. You know, when, when they when were doing the dance thing, you know, the, that traditional crap, me and mm -hmm. Cirque looked at each other and we looked at them and we went, no, I don't think so. And we left. <laughs> no, we went outside and smoked a, smoked a spliff with a couple of millionaire friends of hers from work. Ah. Yeah, and they came to the wedding and they were all dressed in like fatigue, you know, like, uh, not fatigues, but you know, just drab, Khakis. dull, mm -hmm. boring. If you saw these two guys standing there, you would never fucking understood what they were there for, you know? And it was just kind of heartwarming to see the, the differences and all the people that came to support, you know, what we were doing and why we were doing it. And it, it was good. I enjoyed that. And I'm not really one for, you know, pomp and, and all that shit. But I guess when it happens, it's a different story. You see another side of it. It's nice to be recognized by your peers, even though your peers got more money than you. You find out on that that day that they're just like you. They're just, they're yeah. the same. They just got money. It's not different. Yeah. They're just more comfortable. Ah. Ah. Greed and intolerance will take you places that reason and common sense will never go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, when I lived out in Colorado years and years and years ago, I, I learned when I was, God, I was 19, and um, I learned then that there was a guy that uh, we had a strike going on because the, the company that was building the power plant that I worked at um, had fired some people who were taking a nap on their lunch break. <laughs> they were it wasn't that they were fire they were napping on the job they were taking a nap on their lunch break because they'd yeah, been working yeah. you know 12 and 14 hour shifts to try and get a certain part of the of things going yeah. and um so the whole place went on strike and where i worked at um i had a little porta potty kind of thing and i just let the strikers <laughs> come and use the bathroom because i thought there's no sense it's kind of chilly out there there's no sense mm. in them having to do and really seriously yeah. i don't want people dropping trowel out there in the parking lot yeah. and so you know i'd bullshitting with all of these people and this one guy kept coming over and he kept and i swear to god larry the cable guy must have gotten his his fashion sense from this guy <laughs> you know he he drove a rusted out el camino <laughs> <laughs> and wore a baseball cap, and he wore bibbies and flannel mm. shirts with the sleeves cut off. It's the only difference between him and Larry the Cable Guy. And yeah. I just, 
he was a nice guy. He was a lot of fun to talk to. And five days into the strike, it finally got settled. And I asked some of the guys, so how did the strike get settled? And they said, oh, well, the guy that owns 51% of, of such and such company said, fine, I'll just pull my money and see what you can do there. And so they settled the strike because he wanted them to, basically what happened is the guys got reinstated and they got all their back pay, mm -hmm. which is what should have happened. Well, they shouldn't have been fired in the first place, but, you know, that's that's a good way to settle the strike. And I was one of the few people working at the power plant that um, got invited to the celebration party. And when I'm there and I'm chit-chatting, I see this guy that normally is in the bibbies and the cut-off flannel shirts and stuff. And, and he's wearing nice jeans, nice boots, and a really nice full-sleeve flannel shirt. And I went up and I said, hey, you clean up pretty good. And he said, well, I should hope so. And, and <laughs> you know, he buys me a drink. We bullshit for a while. And the next thing I know, someone comes up and says, you do realize you were talking to the guy that settled the strike. And I went, what? And they said, yeah, he threatened to pull all of his money out of Colorado Ute if they didn't settle this right. And I went, what the shit? So I went over and I socked him in the arm. <laughs> And I said, why in the hell didn't you tell me? And he said, would you have treated me different? And I said, I socked you in the arm, didn't I? <laughs> well, yeah, but, but you're one of a kind, Mary. you got to admit that. Well, yeah, thank well, God. They broke the mold. Kind. But, you it's, know. It, well, you and Cirque are similar in that case because she works with, um, in, her, her, in her job, she works with some big shots uh, now and again. And she goes off to these things that, you know, for big shots that know what's going on behind the scenes. <sighs> Crap. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, I'm explaining this correctly or not, but you know, some of the, uh, some of the smartest people are the ones that have the brains to, to dress down and mix with you. So you don't know who they are. Yeah. That reminds me of my brother. He came into a shitload of money. He's trying to collect it from the state or the government or whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, but the money won't change him. He'll still dress and be the same person he's always been. And you'd never know he had any money by looking at him. Well, and see, that's why, why go out of your way to advertise it? I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure. I was just using Alan as an example yeah. of understanding your point. Yeah, because but, you know it is people, funny. Some people just seem to think that once they've got some of those uh, a large accumulation of those debt notes that they can go out there and dress all fancy. But I yeah. know an awful lot of people that go out there and dress all fancy, and they got a large accumulation of debt. Debt. That's what this is all based on. Whatever you got, whatever my brother thinks he's got, it's all debt. It's not real. He understands that. I don't have to explain anything to him. It was perfect. Yeah. You couldn't get a better deal than going, hey, you know, this is all bullshit. Yeah. Okay. What about it? I have access to shit I never saw before. Oh, okay. I understand. And that was it. We both knew what the other was talking about. Yeah. Not this big drawn out. Well, you got to understand the Federal Reserve Bank and its practices and all that horse shit you got to go through with the status to get them to fucking reason, which they never seem to do because they're going to vote their way the fuck out of it. Well, they just don't, they don't understand. You cannot fix a problem with the same mindset that created the problem. The problems that we do have as people, I don't think they involve half the shit that we're told they involve. I don't live in England. I don't give a shit if everybody in Africa moves to fucking England. Let them go there. Doesn't matter to me one bit. Not one bit. But keep them the fuck out of Denmark. <laughs> now, you do realize that if everybody from Africa moved to England, England would flip. I hope so. <laughs> I'm the next heir to the throne, by God. Ah. Country. Well, oh, I, you know, I don't, I was being sarcastic. I don't really care. But the point still remains. They, they overcrowd this island of 
England, UK, whatever, with 70 million people with no concern about when they're going to deplete the fucking natural resources. They don't have that many to start with. Well, right, but the bigger things are never talked about. It's always rape gangs in Germany, rape gangs in Sweden, people drinking all the fucking water, England fucking evaporates. (laughs) You know? Wow. Yeah. Well. There's only so, you know, there in one area, not not globally, but in one specific area, there's only so much to go around. And if if we as people keep crowding everybody into the same four square miles of fucking land, you're going to run out of water eventually, idiot. That is the plan. They're killing us off. And they're doing it so well that the people that are involved in it are still bitching about Muslim and Jew. They don't get the fucking people behind that that are doing it to them. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, those I people are playing day, both wait, ends wait, against the middle. Wait. I wrote the other day on a site. I said, nigger is, you know, Jew is the new nigger. Mm-hmm. Because 20 years ago, my God, if you would have called a nigger a nigger, you would have got, you can't talk to niggers like that. What are you, uncivilized? Now it's bash the Jew, but be nice to the nigger. What the fuck? If yeah. a man treats another man in that manner and looks at a black man and calls him a nigger, you can't change that. That's what he is. You can't legislate that. There's never going to be a cure for that. That is an idiot with a fucking problem. But they take a, hey, sir. But they take it from, now you can't do that to the nigger. Now you can do it to the kike. Now, it, what? You're just trading one fucking shit for another piece of shit. It doesn't change nothing. No. No. And I'm not complaining because I'm a Jew, because it, it's a blood thing. I don't give a fuck about being a Jew. But the constant daily hammering of, these people did this to me. No, you borrowed money from him, you moron. Who held a gun to your head and made you do it? Yeah. The federal government did. That's who. You cannot own property unless you go through this staged fucking drama crap to support the state. You don't get your property. And then default on your fucking tax? Never mind. They'll take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. Then what did you ever own in the first fucking place? Yeah. Good God. It's like they prime you with the driver's license, and then by the time you get to the age where you can afford to buy a house, you're so stupid that you don't know you don't own it. Come on. Oh, Good Lord. My, My Danish wife knows better. She says we pay the bank to live here. Yeah. This is this is no more ours than than seriously than I am hers. It's an agreement you make with people until somebody goes stupid and gets greedy and decides you need to go. Yeah. There you go. Well, how come everybody else doesn't see it that way? Because they're indoctrinated by their upbringing to see things the way they are expected to see them. And if you stray off that even a hair, The herd will bring you back in line in a few minutes. (laughs) Yeah, well, and see. Or they'll pound on you until you can't take the fucking ass kicking anymore and you give in. But as you have probably noticed by now, I don't care. Let them pound on me. I'm still going to live in Denmark. I'm still going to be married to Cirque and I'm still not coming back to America. (laughs) Doesn't make me a. Yeah, wait, wait. But, you know, to take that a step further, it doesn't make me a quitter or a runner away or of unless you hold that state thing so tightly that you can't see it's a fiction. It is not real. And if you cannot see that, then you are going to be where you are. And that ends it right there. You can't convince people that it's fake because they believe it, which makes it correct and real to them. Yeah, see, and what a lot of people, and something that I've just kind of grasped lately, is that um, it's not the government that does all this shit to people. The government doesn't do doodly squat. 
it's the little minions that are, make up the herd that do it. The enforcement, yeah. The people that will point a gun at you at the, at the drop of a paycheck and physically force you to comply to something that they even got to know deep down inside is wrong. Yeah. But, hey, we got to eat. We got to work. We got to live. We, uh, we, we got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. And one day, way back in time, I stepped out of that and said, you know what? I, I don't really care. Life will do what life does. And here I am at 58. And I got a great life. And if I dare to tell anybody that, they don't want to hear it. And well, the reason I think it in the first place is because I detached myself from that fucking group think herd that thinks they're the only one that knows what to do. Yeah. You know, your way does not work. You can't fix plumbing with mechanics tools for a vehicle. You need plumbing tools. Yes. And I think the same thing applies in society. You can't fix a social problem that's not broken until you break it. And that's what society does. They fuck it up so bad that it's overwhelming and you just got to shut somebody up and join a side. Well, you know, see, you said with mechanical, like, auto things. I think it's even more, if you were to say you can't fix plumbing with electric tools, because either though both of them you're dealing with a current or a flow, it, they are completely different creatures. And you, yeah, you don't want to mix well, electrical society, and plumbing. But Mary, they've got society bamboozled with this idea. Hey, baby, they got, they got us all... Wait, you got what? By the balls. By the balls. Oh. They got us all by the circuit interjected, by the yeah. balls, to believe whatever the most people say. If yeah. you disagree with Trump is the greatest president since sliced bread, they're going to come back at you with GDP is up. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. You can cook books in any layer of government you pick. It's all a bunch of contrived bullshit to keep you supporting their bullshit. We're all drowning in fucking debt, people. Wake up and understand this. There is no money. There is no Bitcoin. There is no fucking anything except you believing that there is. Well, it's a medium of exchange. And it's it's based on it's nothing. A joint illusion that it's true. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's my opinion. I may be wrong. I don't believe I'm wrong. But I think that if enough people agree with something, that agreement is all it takes to give it reality. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's true or false or not. People agree with it. And that's what they need. They well, need to agree with something. They need to be included. We want to be appreciated by our fellows. It's our weakness. The system plays off of every day. Well, you know, it's just like when we, I think we were discussing it before the show as well. Um, when I said I'd seen that thing about um, somebody said that, that they've been doing this for thousands of years. You know, just because you've been doing something wrong for thousands <laughs> of years doesn't make it any more right. They if you're doing it wrong weed for thousands of years until the 19th century when some fucking moron got this, "Hey, let's make some money off synthetics. How are we going to do that?" We'll just tell some lies. Actually, I'd heard something the other day that it was it basically started in the you know, the early 1910s-ish area. And uh, it was them Mexicans coming over and smoking it. And it was a racist kind of thing. Them there Mexicans are smoking that weed. Of course, it wasn't. Mm. My dad said mm. that they used to go and pick wild tobacco out of the ditches and mm -hmm. dry it and roll it it's and smoke good. it. And he said some of that stuff gave them quite the buzz. Yep. Which, you know, I giggled about it when he was telling me about that shit. And then he goes, those damn potheads. And I'm like, dude, what do you think you were doing? <laughs> yeah. But, well, you know, you it, it all a, starts with just, it starts Mary, with give, an agenda. It always starts give, with an agenda. You give something a different name and to the masses, it's something different. Yes.
Marijuana. Fuck your marijuana in the butt. Yeah. Well, There's no such thing as marijuana. Yeah, that name was given to it in the early... Um, to Yeah, to demonize it as a Mexican bad thing against white people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they got Mexico back. They took all the fucking land away and kicked them all the way down south of uh, whatever they're south of. <laughs> yeah, and you know, now everybody goes down there for a vacay. <laughs> it's yeah, like... because... They took it all back, and now they're all crowded up in California and other places. Uh, it's a game. I mean, good Lord. If you can look at this crap and call it real, you're, you are you got to be at least half crazy. There's, oh. there's no way to look at the life that is expressed to us on through the MSM and the Internet and really consider that any form of reality. It's a lot of shit. That you are convinced is reality so that you'll support it. Well, it's the Matrix, my dear. Fuck. I mean, good God. People are just now waking up to Palestine is a victim of a land grab. You got to show them a, la- a fucking map of 1947 where Israel was once Palestine, you dumbasses. You figure this fucking out or what? Is it beyond your scope? And I'm a Jew, and I'm telling you, my people have robbed these fucking Palestinians of everything they're going to ever have. And with the support of the free world over a lie. A and they're still lie. doing it. They're still robbing more and yes. more and more. Uh, it's it's sad. And the bigger the fucking lie, just like you know, all these people that want to praise Hitler now, Hitler was nothing more than a, sh- a banker's shill in his day. He didn't have any message for you. You're just just as caught up in the bullshit as an American or a Polak or a Peruvian or whatever country you prescribe to. It's all bullshit to keep you stupid so that you don't get out in the world and find out people are are all the same. Yeah. I'm serious, Mary. I meet strangers every day. I pass people in the street. We wave at each other. Some of them are a little shocked at first because I'm striking, you know, long hair and shit. I shaved the other day. But, you know, the long hair kind of the funny clothes might throw them off a little bit. But they say hi back. Yeah. They're not impolite. And, you know, all all I'm saying is that if, if we were nicer to each other, things would improve. But we're not – that's not the fuel we get. We get second-rate in second rate electricity, second-rate food. Okay, thank you, Circle. So I got coffee. We so, get yeah, second-rate yeah. every fucking thing, but we're, we're not willing to admit that. Some part of us doesn't want to go, hey, you know what? Let's get a 1,000 people together and go and tell them we want real electricity, not the shit you're selling us. But you can't do it. It's never going to happen. And then that puts you in the victim mode. Well, look what they're doing to us. Not look what we're tolerating. Yeah. Yeah, because there's always another way of looking at things. Always. Mm -hmm. And my brother Joey is ever so good at pointing out that, you know, and then I have to Mm -hmm. go, okay, you're right. (laughs) There is that. Shit. (laughs) So I've oh. I've learned just from my siblings. Here, cover that, me for two minutes. I got the door. Oh, okay. Well, what I was telling Flasher is I I've learned from my siblings because I have lots of them, and we do have banter's and and sometimes those banter's get very very in depth. But I've learned that you know you just plain have to not hold on to your opinion too tightly. Because if you do, you are going to get monkey piled by an awful lot of people that know better or know a different view that is probably more appropriate than your own. So, yeah, I have learned don't hang on to those opinions too tightly because, you number one, you just might hurt yourself clutching it and uh, you just might hurt yourself <laughs> by... Uh, expressing it and forcing it on others it's yeah i'm sitting over here looking at twitter because this is usually what i do when flasher and i banter and flasher has been pretty much carrying the the show today (laughs) and i'm looking at twitter and i'm going what the hell is going on i don't watch the news so what the hell is going on with all of this 
shit in the White House lately. It looks like, I don't know, there's all kind of craziness going on, and I'm, um, and then I saw Barbara Streisand and, and Dangleberry, and really, seriously, I thought they were gone. Damn it. But. Because. Because see, what? Because I lied. I could, I could have told you that was Cirque and the dog at the door, which I did do, but I had to use the toilet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got another glass of elixir halfway through the show. She gave me one before and one after. And as big a man as I am at 5'4 and 135, I, I can't hold two cups of coffee. <laughs> one had to go. <laughs> now, that, now that you've all been enlightened in my personal business out there in RLM land. Oh, you know what? Being what? as you buried, you know, I buried you alive. I'm sorry, Mary, but. That was like the first time I ever did that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And normally wow. it's me going, damn, dude, yeah, I've no. really got to. <laughs> well, you know, I would consider RLM because uh, WT went. RLM's my my home. Whether the, I'm welcome there or not, I don't really give a shit. I like it. I like the people that are there. Even some of the people I don't like. A little part of me just knows that they're necessary for the bigger game. Yes. You know, I, I just can't wait. I, hmm. I can't personally hold back when somebody pisses me off and just want to fight. It's the way I, you know, the American in me. Well, and see, I was Sir, talking about how, you know, I just, hmm. with all of my siblings, we have those verbal battles all the time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I yeah. get pretty much... There are times, there are times when I am, I am able to sway the opinion of my siblings, but a lot of times my opinion gets swayed. And so, yeah, I have to, I have learned throughout my life, do not hold on too tightly to that opinion. Mm. So, well, you know how one parent will, will dote over the other sibling more than the other sibling? Yeah, Larry was always the favorite. Okay. That's what we always said. Yeah, my, my father was partial to my brother, and my mother was partial to me in, in so many words, right? Mm -hmm. And and my brother had to, had to, you know, he was there physically, so he, he spent a lot of time with my mom at the end of her days listening to how fucking wonderful his brother is. Mm -hmm. I, I know my mom. She brags about me, you know. And the poor guy had to sit there and endure that shit for the last six months of her life. And, you know, I, now I understand it differently because she's gone. Mm -hmm. Where when she was here, I thought, eh, you're just talking shit. And then now that she's gone, the, the idea of that poor fucker had to sit there and listen to my mother bragging about her older, you know, oy vey, how, how did you tolerate it without slapping her yourself? Well, you know, you do I'm those kidding. things. I know, no. but you do those things for your parents because, you know, parents do. I get the same damn shit from my siblings no. when we get together and we start talking about grandpa. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mary is grandpa's favorite. Mary was no. always grandpa's favorite. Yada, 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 yada. And it's like, no, Mary was the one that lived in town and was able to go over and do things for grandpa and for grandma. That's why Mary is grandpa's favorite, because I right. was here. Which is the opposite of the reality of the last couple of years, because I've been in here in Denmark with Circle. Uh-huh. And only communicated by telephone and Skype, right? Yeah. So, you know, my brother's been the one that had to sit there in physical life and, you know, go through what he went through. Yeah. But I know my mom. You know, so I, I know what she did and I know how she treated him and blah, blah, blah. And it, he knows it's nothing personal like you do. Mm -hmm. You were the one that was there at the time. Well, poor Alan, he was the one there at the time, but he he was still listening to reruns from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> poor kid. He was. But, yeah. The only show that was playing was I Love Louie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one. The sad part about it is, is we lost our mom, you know, uh -huh. and, and the good part about it is the old bad ain't fucking suffering anymore because she really was. Yeah. Life was physically hard on her. And, uh, you know, when it's your relatives or your mother or your father, it's hard to verbally say those things while they're alive. You don't want to say that shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I would have never in a million years wish, oh, I hope you're relieved of the pain and die, you old bat. I would have never thought that. But after she went, then it was, well, I'm glad that you're done and everything's, you know, cool for you now. You don't have to suffer anymore. Yeah. But I don't know if other people would see that the way that I really, you know, intended to come across. Yeah. It still sounds like selfish, oh, you must be waiting for your share of the will kind of shit. But I... I don't know. I don't really care. I was just covering all the bases. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I understand that. When my auntie passed this last summer, it was, that was kind of tough because, you know, she, well, I like my auntie Wanda, but I still have conversations with her. And every time Rascal mm. gets on my lap, I just look at her and, and I remember mm. that, you know, when I, when she, um, got fixed and auntie wanda mm. took her down to her vet because it could get done a hell of a lot faster than up here in the boonies and mm. i went down to get her and here's aunt wanda mm. sitting in a rocket chair with rascal all wrapped up in a blanket and she's just talking to her and patting her and you'd think that it was a little baby the way she was pampering her and you know, Rascal just, she gets up on my lap and she'll nuzzle like she was doing with Aunt Wanda. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. Auntie Wanda, see what you did to my cat. <laughs> wow. You know, you just brought up to mind is my parents had a cat named Munch. And Munch is still alive and both the parents are gone. Oh, wow. And I, <laughs> Munch must be about 20. Oh, Lord. That's getting yeah. up there for a cat. She's a big, yeah. When me and Cirque would Skype, the cat would paw my, you know, claw my paw to get me to, to away from the computer. <laughs> she was jealous. <laughs> yeah. She would see see or hear Cirque or whatever cats do when, when you're communicating on Skype. And the cat would just go nuts. I still remember that after all these years. Yeah. You know, of all the weird things, huh? Yeah, well, but, and that's what Rascal thing, does. I get on the radio, yeah. and first thing she does is get on my lap, and she starts pawing at the microphone. Yeah, but not the the parents are both gone, but their cat is still here. I wonder if that means something in you know the overall scheme of life. It's probably yeah. the cat is sitting there going, I have accomplished my job. Because I tell you what, cats do that. I swear to God, my cats, if I don't feed them their canned food at the appropriate time, they do the whole figure eight thing around my feet, especially when I'm close to the stairs. It's like you either feed us our canned food that we love because it's delicious or we will trip mm. you going down the stairs. That's a cat wow. thing. <laughs> I don't know. I've been I've been buying the doctor the same crappy shit um, store brand cat food now that I always bought him. And every day it's, you know, like, good Lord, aren't you sick of this shit? And he does that happy rub your ass on my leg dance when I feed him. Mm -hmm. So I figure it like this. Just do what works. Yeah. You know, the cat goes out and he comes back. And when he comes back, the first thing he wants to do is eat. And so you'd think he was out hunting. Yeah. Well, yeah, probably. But he's a big cat. It's wintertime. He needs to bulk. But, you know, it, it just strikes me as odd. Sometimes you underestimate your own interest and remove it and replace it with something like food or shelter. And it looks like it's real, but it's really not. I think the cat really feels at home here. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. adopted you guys. Oh, it's a cat. It could go anywhere. and do, It's like me. It could go anywhere and do whatever it wants. And wherever it goes, it will find comfort. Yeah. The cat in me always knows wherever I go, I'll be all right. Doesn't matter where I'm at. Yeah. It don't matter who I'm around or how much money I got or where I live. No, it, I take that that comfort that I've got inside me to the next place, and there you go. And maybe I'm just lucky enough to find a place now to where I can stay. Yeah. Yeah, well, well I never looked for it before, though, Mary. Well, I was always ready for the next trip to go somewhere and do something exotic. I was always ready for the next adventure to the unknown. And now I don't even, yeah, you know, outside of going to the grocery store for dinner, fuck you. I don't want to go anywhere. So I don't know what happened to me, but something changed. 
And then on top of it, now I'm alone with no parents at all. My mom's gone now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mentally it's a, it's a trip that each person goes through in their own way. And I'm finding out for myself as I should not listening to your version of mommy's gone, but living through my own. Mm -hmm. Well, it's subjective. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I, and I can make good or bad of it at will. It's all a matter of how I feel at the moment. Yes. And I mean, I want to be in control of that. But sometimes I let it slip, you know, and I let my happiness go to other people to control. Yeah, see, and that right there is a big, yeah, because people don't realize they let other people control their happiness. When yes. when they when yeah. they can't find it, it's yeah. because they let someone else control it. Well, then there's the bad side, that extreme other side of that, which I am, which is, well, I don't trust you. You're, I'm not going to let you make me happy. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, but nobody else can make you happy. You have to make you happy. Hey, don't start bringing reality into the conversation. <laughs> this is no time for rational thinking. Think with your clitoris, damn it. Huh? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me and Wayne got to talk. Oh, boy. I give him a roadmap. <laughs> I'm kidding, Wayne. I'm not serious at all. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Oh, he's at work. That doesn't matter. He'll probably hear the show. If he doesn't listen to the shit we say behind his back, I would be amazed. <laughs> uh, oh. Keeps the dorks wondering what the fuck we're talking about, Miss Mary. Oh, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about, and that's oh, okay. I, no, I know. I do know. And you know how I know? How do you know? I make it all up myself. As I go. <laughs> That's right. That's what reality is for me, is whatever I want it to be. If I want to fight with Cirque about the coffee wasn't strong enough, I can do that. All I got to do is just go, hey, Cirque, the coffee wasn't strong enough. <laughs> See, and then she go. She's sitting in the background, going, "Well, then go make your own goddamn coffee." <laughs> right, which is logical. There's your answer. So why start the fight in the first place? Yeah, yeah. Why are we so argumentative and mean to each other? You know, I wonder that about myself all the time. Why am I? Because circle, tell me, God, you're mean. I go, well. Hmm. And I think about it, I go, I don't think I'm mean. And I look back on what I wrote, and I go, wow, fuck. I guess I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a good and a bad life. There's a nice and there's a hard. The, whatever extreme there is, there's an opposite to it. Mm -hmm. But I always seem to fall on the negative side of the opposite, whatever, I, whatever stand I take. Hmm. It's hard to find the good in me for most folk. Most folk don't see it. Oh, my, I, you know, my wife brags over there. She goes, I do. Well, yeah, she does. But Cirque's got this special translator that other people don't seem to have and understands what I mean behind what I say. Well, you're just a funny little Jewy bastard. Probably, but I mean, you know, well, we're all... We're all either cursed or gifted with something, you know, equal. Yeah, I got my weak side. I got my strong side. And it turns out in my later days, my strong side is my wife knows what the fuck I'm talking about, even when everybody else has no idea what I'm saying. She gets it. Ah, See? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, so I can get not get along with Grimner and trust nobody and... Meister Brow and you and everybody, but as long as me and Cirque see it the same way, that's really what matters, not yeah. how well I'm treated on the internet. I mean, I got to admit, it was nice to have somebody I met on Minds come over and check out RLM and be cordial and friendly. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a nice thing, but it wasn't an intention. It was a byproduct of interaction. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, and, and it was cool. Was real nice. He put up that big duber thing in front of the dork table, and I went, wow, 
we're getting some positive feedback from people that, you know, may not agree with everything we say, but they want to be free. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Let them. Hey, it's cool. It's in your mind anyway. I mean, if they can't control your mind, they can hold your body in a cell and feed you garbage all they want, but they'll never get your mind if you don't let them. Yeah. And there's only obviously a few people that are clear on how to explain that to others. And there's just some people that will never understand the message because they're they're prejudiced with their their status belief. It's not you know, it's not like a fault thing. You, you are what you are, but you can always improve or change your opinion if you choose to. But if the indoctrination is so strong that you can't reason with truth, then you're probably going to lose. You know, that's that's like. Here we go with our little synchronicities again. Here you're talking about all that fun stuff, and I'm I clicked over on <laughs> Minds, and uh, River Rose posted our thoughts and feelings have an electromagnetic reality. Manifest wisely. Yeah, fuck yeah, because we repel the, the statist as they repel us, and we draw each other. You know. That's what we get. I, I, that's why the guy came over. What was his? How do you say his name? <laughs> uh, cough, cough, cough. Anyway, the point remains. I'm not good with names and faces, but ideas I can handle. <laughs> and even if I'm wrong to you, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you agree. It doesn't matter if you disagree. What matters is that you engage. Yes. Right. Yes. There comes the, the divide and conquer. And as long as me and you are arguing about something trivial that has no value, the other side wins because that's what they do. They keep us off our fucking feet. So we're stupid and we do and say stupid things that don't help. They only hurt. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, all right, I'll give you an example from my nasty side. Every time I call hands an idiot. I might believe it with 100% behind me, but it's still wrong to do it. But that nasty, horrible side of me just takes control, and I give in to it. And I go with it instead of not doing it. So I fuel the fire of divide and conquer instead of extinguish it. And until I learn whatever lesson I'm supposed to fucking learn from all this shit, I'm going to keep doing the same thing the same way. That's what learning is, is changing to a better direction. For yes. me, not, maybe not for you, but for me. And as much as me and Hans differ on a belief system, the fucker's still a human being, and I should give him that. But in type, I don't seem to. Yeah. If you were to read the shit I say to him, you wouldn't think so. Oh, I've read some of the shit that you two say to each other, and it's like, wow. Did you read the part that I told him I wish everything for him that he wishes for me? Ooh. I truly mean it. If he wished me a billion dollars, I'd wish it right back for him. I would, you know, but that's not what he wishes for me. What Hans openly wishes for me is for somebody to take my freedom away from me because I won't follow written rules by man. And I say, fuck all of you people. You're, a, you're full of yourself. Get over it. You, you don't own me. I belong to me. And then I get my wife that thinks she owns me, but mm, she kind of does. <laughs> 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 you know, that was a contract I willingly went into. You know? mm -hmm. But the state thing? No, fuck the state. Don't got shit on me, bitch. They yeah. can suck my lily white butt cheeks until there's nothing left. As far as I'm concerned... But in reality, do they own me? Uh, no. Without my consent, what do they have? Nothing. Uh, they got a legal fight. And who wants that? So the powers that run my life give me this fucking wonderful time in Denmark with a nice wife. There you go. Instead of, instead of the confinement of America, which was so, wow, there, I was stifled there. I couldn't breathe. It was so free, I couldn't, I mean, good God, I bitched about the trip to Scotland, but once I was in Scotland, I was like, wow, I'm glad I left. What was I thinking? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's that aversion to change that many of us mm. have, especially Me drastic too. change. If you, if you try to change my life today, I'd resist, of course, because I think I'm happy. But I always go with the changes regardless of what I verbally say, and things always improve. No matter what happens, no matter how bad things look on Monday, just wait. It, it's something setting you up for something better. It just doesn't look that way right now. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 could be, I could be upset about mom passing, but I'm going to go your route and go with the, well, she's not ill anymore. I don't have to listen to the how bad she's doing in the hospital stories. So there's a good side to it even though it's selfish. Well, and there's also that that little question that I saw the other day. What if when we die, we really wake up? And all of this is just know. a dream. I don't know. I don't claim to know. I'm just rolling along with everybody else. Yeah. Saying, you know, repeating the things I think I know. I've said it before. I don't believe I know anything, but I got a lot of ideas. Yeah. And the, the three things I do know, I can't get anybody else to agree with. So <laughs> I, I'm very alone in that. Well. You know, if, if our life was based on honesty and we did not have this instinct to murder other men and women and we grew hemp, life would be perfect. But I'm the... One guy that says that everybody else goes, oh, let's vote on it. Oh, let's get this guy to fix it. Oh, let... no, that won't never work. It's not designed to work. It's designed no. to do what it does. Yes. Enjoy the enjoy the uh, chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the fluoride in the water and the GMOs in your food, the forced inoculations oh, and that all rem- the other false freedoms that you think you have. Because you are verbally committed to some freaking fiction on a piece of paper. It's all crap. All of it. That reminds me of something Gary oh. L. posted over on, on Fakey Book Gary last L. night, I think. Um, mm. But it was a video that these guys that are working on a construction project out in the cold. Uh, looks like a remodel or a repair or something major um, at a house. And they're walking around and they had some water jugs you know like the the one gallon water jugs that had been out overnight and they were frozen solid and you know there were other containers around the area that were frozen solid but they had they came across this aquafina bottle that had maybe an inch inch and a half of water at the bottom and it was still liquid as in not even slushy it was still liquid and they said, if you don't believe this one, if you think we just kind of put this out there, then over here, and there's a wheelbarrow, and it's got all kind of trash and stuff in it, and it's got another Aquafina bottle. It's got a couple inches of water in the bottom of the bottle yet, and it was frozen into the wheelbarrow, and you can see him working it out, and when he picks it up and holds it to the camera, it's just plain old, looks like plain old water. And it was like, whoa, whoa, which when I looked at some of the comments, it said either there's antifreeze in there or that's vodka, one of the two. <laughs> but I think even vodka in those kind of situations would at least get cloudy and slushy. <laughs> and so I'm looking at that going, ooh, well, not that I've been a big Aquafina fan anyway. I normally don't buy name brand bottled waters. But wow, mm. I am definitely going to stay away from it now. <laughs> wow. Ooh, that was I weird. Don't know. Wow. But again, and here we go. It's a story being told through a third person that saw a link. Well, yeah, I'm telling the story of yeah, right, of right, a video right. and, I watched. Yeah, I know. Our, our normal is what we've had used against us ever since we were born. So think about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's your side and there's her side and there's what really happened. And when people start grabbing that idea and holding it, maybe they'll make more sense of the shit they listen to. Ah. Hmm. Ah. Because whether your story is true or not, it's interesting and it makes people think. Hmm. And it makes other people do the exact opposite and not think, but react and follow. 
pick a side. Yeah. This is true. This is not true. Well, how do you know without seeing it yourself? Well, Mary just told me, and she's my buddy. I do radio with her every week. She wouldn't lie to me. That yeah. doesn't mean that the information isn't bullshit. Well, the, the point isn't whether you're telling the truth or not. The point is we've all been conditioned under different circumstances to get us to a certain spot. Uh-huh. And you know what? The point is yeah. we're out of time. Oh, next <laughs> week. <laughs> same God, dorky time, same it. dorky channel, huh? That's all, folks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Sorry we went over, but dang, we were just titty chatting. So <laughs> we, we started. Late, um, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, we so. did have a messed up start. Um, be yeah. sure to check back tomorrow at noon Eastern Time. Grimner with the blues leading into Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on your ass behind the woodshed. And uh, Gary uh, Ellen Gigi's boo will bring you down the road less traveled tomorrow evening at 7.